Welcome to Holistic Accountant Podcast, where we aim to showcase how adopting a holistic approach in accounting and tax maximizes value for clients. Beyond traditional tasks like preparing financial statements and tax returns, a holistic accountant focuses on offering advice that maximizes personal wealth on an after-tax basis. If you enjoy this episode, please consider leaving a rating and sharing it with those who might also benefit. And to ensure you stay updated, subscribe to our weekly email. The link is in the show notes. Okay, today Mina and I would like to talk about the Stage 3 tax cuts which kick in in 1 July. Of course, they're not as attractive now to higher income earners as they were previously, but the fact of the matter is that income tax liabilities are coming down or reducing and there's some things that you can do to take advantage of that. And so the first thing that we think about is how to get money out of entities. So if we're in business and we're generating a taxable profit, how do we get that into our personal name? Now, we might want to use it, get it into our personal names for a variety of purposes, obviously to fund living expenses. And if your business is doing really well and you want to spend more on living expenses, then the consequence of that is that you do need to withdraw more money from your company and that can give rise to a greater level of income tax. You might want to use it to repay your home loan or repay other debts. Or it's just a way of investing money in a more tax effective manner. So maybe contributing into super or making a capital contribution into a family trust. So we always try to then think, how can we get as much into our personal name as possible, but without giving rise to too much tax to kind of find that balance. So the game isn't to reduce our tax to zero because that, well, that'd be great, but it means maybe all our money's still all trapped inside entities and we actually can't use it. Like, so what's the whole point of, you know, having a great business with great cash flow if you actually can't put it to work in terms of improving your standard of living? So our approach then is to think about if we leave all our profit in a corporate environment, we will pay 25 to 30% in tax depending on the structure. So we're not going to pay any more than 30%. So then the best way to think about it is how much money can I take into my personal name without paying more than an average rate of 30%? Because whilst the incremental or marginal rate might be higher than 30%, if I'm only paying 30% across the board, then I may as well take it out of the company in my personal name because it gives me a lot more flexibility in what to do with that money. So in the financial year ending 30 June 24, you can withdraw pre-tax income of about 100 dollars 165000 per person. And if someone records a taxable income of 165000 they're going to pay around about a 30% average tax rate on that income. As a result of the stage three tax cuts for financial year 25, so 30, ending 30 June 25, individual can take 200000 of taxable income. And so that's an extra 35000 of pre-taxable income that you can take out of an entity into your personal name while still leaving your tax rate or keeping your tax rate at 30% or below. So really from our perspective, that just means we can get more money out of trading entities into our personal name to give ourselves some flexibility. Now, superannuation caps are also increasing from 1 July, which means you can contribute up to $30,000 into your super fund and claim a tax deduction for it. So that essentially means you can pay yourself out a $230,000 income component from your company, maintain that 30% tax rate that Stuart was talking about previously, and get some more money into super as well. Now, I know unrelated to these 1 July tax cuts, but I'm advised anyway, the carry forward carry concessional contributions, the 2018-19 amounts are expiring this year so contemplate whether you should be topping up those superannuation contributions as well before 30 june Another thing to think about is whether you can delay income. Obviously, the tax rate's coming down, particularly for people that earn less than 130000 You know, they get, from a percentage perspective, greater reduction in tax. So if you are able to shift some of that income into the next financial year, you know, potentially that could save you some money. It's probably not a big thing, like it's probably not going to save you a lot of money, but just something to think about. And the other consideration is just Division 293 tax. What Division 293 tax? It's a tax that's imposed on all taxpayers who have what is called an adjusted taxable income of over 250000 That means you'll have to pay an additional 15% tax on your superannuation contributions that have been made during the year. Now, if you're paying a wage out of your company and you've got income independent to that wage in your personal return, just try to make sure that you're either under that threshold or pay yourself under that threshold and then your partner can be 
be over that threshold as an example, just to make sure that only one of you or none of you are incurring that Division 293 tax. And putting investments in lower income earners' name, again, because tax rates have reduced by about 2.5% for people that earn between 145 and 135000 So if your spouse is in that tax bracket and you're in the highest marginal tax bracket, well, then having investments in their name, all things being equal, of course, there's lots of other considerations other than income tax. That's something to also think about. Finally, the last thing to consider is bringing forward any tax deductions into this current financial year. Now, obviously, the tax rates are much higher this financial year, so you'll benefit or have a greater tax deduction for any expenses that you incurred this financial year rather than next. So there's not a lot in it, I think, for business owners in terms of taking advantage of these tax cuts. As I said at the beginning of the episode, the big thing is, yes, we'll be able to withdraw more money from trading entities, which again will help us fund living expenses or or invest in a more tax effective manner, which is great. It's a good outcome. But in terms of, you know, is there anything you should be doing this year versus next year to really take advantage of them? It's probably more of the same, which is really just making tax deductible super contributions and then think thinking very carefully about your profit distribution strategy. That's it for us for this week. Until next week, bye for now.